Welcome to Earth Juice. Coming up this week, dark matter comes to light, sharks hunting by the moon, measuring hobbit brains, and rare crocodiles breeding in the UK. Now, dark matter is kind of hard to explain, but it is said to be a bit like an invisible glue that binds the galaxies together. So scientists all around the world are in a race to try and find and isolate this mysterious stuff. There are two properties that can help them. Firstly, that it doesn't interact with light, and secondly, that it does interact with gravity. By using silicon detectors to hopefully catch these interactions in their underground lab, scientists from the Minnesota-based cryogenic dark matter search team have revealed that they have three leads as to the existence of this elusive matter. But the team added that these results were preliminary and more work was needed before it can be confirmed. With many scientists trying to find actual dark matter, this announcement has really caused quite a buzz, as although dark matter makes up around 25% of the universe, nobody has ever seen it. Australian researchers have revealed that lunar cycles can affect the diving behaviour of sharks. A team made up of scientists from the University of Western Australia and the Australian Institute of Marine Science spent nearly three years following grey reef sharks in the Pacific Ocean. They used acoustic telemetry to track the tax sharks and observed that in the full moon the sharks were in deep water, but they moved to the shallows with each new moon. Similar patterns have been recorded in other predatory fish, suggesting that this behaviour could be related to hunting and finding food. The study also concluded that this could be a survival response, where the reef sharks avoid the light nearer the surface, where larger sharks are more likely to be hunting for prey. Scientists have revealed that the brains of an ancient meter meter tall human, Homo floresiensis, nicknamed the hobbits, were actually much bigger than previously thought. And these diminutive people from Indonesia are a unique species and not simply deformed modern humans. Researchers scanned the only known hobbit skull and found that its brain size was 426 cubic centimeters and not the 400 previously thought. Now, with the average Homo sapien brain, that's you and I, being about 1300 cubic centimeters, that would make the hobbit brain about the size of this grapefruit. Paleoanthropologists had also argued that the hobbit couldn't have evolved from Homo erectus, one of our ancestors, because of the physical size difference. But with the Javanese remains of Homo erectus having relatively small brains of only 860 cubic centimetres, the researchers suggest that it may be plausible that Homo erectus is the ancestor of Homo floresiensis, so hobbits may be humans after all. And finally, this week Maddie visited Crocodiles of the World in Oxfordshire, UK and discovered that some of the world's rarest crocodiles are due to lay eggs. This is a female Siamese crocodile who's currently sat on a nest. Sean, can you tell me what this means for this particular species to be nesting? Siamese crocodiles are the third most endangered crocodile species in the world. So uh, wild numbers are less than 500. They're a critically endangered species. So captive breeding programs like this are extremely important to help their wild cousins, absolutely. And how many eggs is she likely to lay? Um, she could have 40 eggs, maybe, so um, quite a number. If we're successful in hatching them, depending on how many she has and how many that go on to hatch, it could make up 7% of the wild population, roughly. So a huge story here for conservation. A massive story for crocodile conservation, absolutely. We have our fingers crossed that she lays and that Sean and his team are successful in hatching the eggs. And don't worry, we'll be back to cover the whole thing. That's this week's juice. Make sure you subscribe to see how Maddie gets on moving a three meter alligator. And we'll see you next week. What makes these creatures so menacing is their deadly anatomy. An ultra powerful, almost circular body provides agility and extreme speed in small sharp bursts. So they can dart in and out of their prey, grabbing chunks of flesh before they even have a chance to react. They've got near identical rows of triangular razor sharp teeth and these teeth interlock with each other to create a formidable wall of blades. And the top row fits so perfectly into the bottom that they can slice off flesh like a pair of scissors. 